today I'm going to share my responses to the eyeshadow palette tag round two. This was started by Allie Glines and Samantha March, but I've also seen Amy Loves Makeup do it and Maggie's Makeup Medley. I think I Am Jamila did, did it. Did Dion Loves Makeup do it? Like a lot of people are doing it. So I had to jump on that little bandwagon and give my responses. So there are 11 questions slash prompts and I'm just going to jump in. Now the way that I did this in terms of determining my answers was I actually just looked at the question and then I thought of the palettes. So I didn't go and look through all my drawers and everything. Um, I just wanted to go with whatever it was that like came to me, you know? So here we go. Now the first one is what is your all-time favorite eyeshadow palette? For that I picked my Divine Rose 1 eyeshadow palette from Mother Pat McGrath, the dame. Now, I didn't purchase this like when it first came out. I didn't get the pink packaging, which I, I kind of, like I don't have many regrets, but no, maybe I actually do. Anyway, I regret it because it's so cute, but... Like, nobody's looking at this, and nobody's gonna be like, why isn't that one pink? So I just had to like, you know, I just had to tell myself to chill out. What I like about this eyeshadow palette is that I feel like I'm able to get a variety of looks. It's a lot more versatile than I thought it would be, because when I focused on this palette for like a week or two, what I noticed was that I was able to get like really nice, kind of in your face <laughs> looks but I was also able to get looks that were a bit more suited for like daytime or the work day and so I just find that I can do so much with this palette and didn't even realize so it's one that if I want to use a Pat McGrath palette but I want something where I'm like I don't have to like map it out on like a scoreboard or something to try to figure out like what I'm gonna do then I'm gonna go ahead and use the Divine Rose one. The next question is your new favorite eyeshadow palette. And for me right now, that is the Nabla Side by Side. Now I purchased this palette after watching Kai Mason and on her channel she used this a few times and I was like, that looks cute. I kind of want to try it. And this was the first Nabla eyeshadow palette that I purchased. So I really like this palette. I actually have focused on using this palette this past week. And I love the, the looks that I've come up with. I really like the shade Tempera. And my favorite shimmer in here is Magic Moment. But I really like all of the shades, honestly. And it has a mix of uh, warm and cool neutrals. And so it's sort of an all everything is there that you need. So this is a really good palette. And what I also like is that it, um, the formula is really good. So yeah, that is my new favorite. I'm guessing that may change just because it seems like we all change our new, fa our favorites like every other day. Okay, so the next one is, what is the eyeshadow palette that you are keeping for the memories? Now, I actually have two because I can't seem to follow directions. And that is the Frenication palette by Dose of Colors, as well as the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. So these are two of the older palettes in my collection. I think there is one palette that I'll talk about that is that I've had longer than these two. The Dose of Colors Frenication is a limited edition eyeshadow palette and it was a collab with Desi, Katie, and um, Dose of Colors. Now I really like this palette and I tended, as you can probably see, to kind of focus on this side of the palette, but I spent some time just focusing on this eyeshadow palette and I used these shimmers over here and they were gorgeous. Like they were actually some of my favorite shimmers and I hadn't paid them as much attention because I just tend to go with the berries and the pinks and the browns and the gold but I really enjoy it. Now the memory for this is that it's just one of my first palettes that I got 
I do feel like it's probably time to let it go <laughs> because I've had it so long, but I keep holding on to it. So I'm just, I'm not ready. The other is the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. And this was also the first Colored Rain eyeshadow palette that I purchased. This is a palette that has been I think consistently loved over the years. Like it was super popular for a while, but every time someone mentions it, like people still like it and I still like it. Like I love the uh, shades and I love the looks I can create with it. I love that I'm supporting a black woman owned business. The formula is good. I don't use it as much. I do have a lot of these colors in like every other palette that I have, but there's just something special about this palette and like supporting uh, someone in business. And it's just, it's pretty, yeah, I think it's probably like one of their best that they have uh, created. I did order several of the minis along with cream blushes, lipsticks, gloss, I think a bronzer. So we'll see if that still holds up as like my favorite colored rain purchase. The next one is an underrated palette. Now I didn't pick one again. I just wanted to say that the Lorac minis are supremely underrated. Now the most recent three that they came out with are Mystic Oak, which is this one here, Frosted Sequoia, this one here, and Winter Rose. That's one there. Now I think that Lorac is just underrated period. Like I think they were a much more popular brand several years ago. I am hearing more people talk about them lately though. I love their formula. It's very easy. I like the shades. I like the just simple sleek black packaging. And for the larger palettes that they, that they have, you can pop the shades out and put other ones in. You can't do that for the minis, but this is like good to just throw in your bag because you've got your little eyeshadows and then you've got this little mirror. And so it's just like, so portable and easy and quick. I actually did a look with this little palette uh, a while ago and a friend of mine thought it was the Glam by Natasha Denona because it looked so similar to like looks that I could get with that one. So yeah, the Lorac minis I really enjoy. Now, as I always say, they could come down like five or $10 on the cost of these. And I actually have one of the Lorac palettes on my eyes today. It is the uh, Fairy Tale Forest. That is the newest one that they came out with. So yeah, I'm really enjoying Lorac and I do feel like they're still a bit underrated. Now, the palette that is not my favorite, but I can't get rid of it. That is my Huda mercury retrograde i know so many people are like die hard fans of this palette it's a beautiful palette right i don't know why i can't get on that bandwagon i'm just like no drop me off over there i just it's very pretty but i find that just some of the shades are just light <laughs> and like leaning more pastel and I just don't feel like they complement my skin as much. I haven't seen as many people put it in their favorites, um, like as many people who have a deeper skin tone, but let me know if I'm missing those folks. I have done various looks with this. It's like I always, I'm like trying to convince myself that I love it. That's just a bad idea. Don't do that. Oh, it has bad repercussions. Just in life, like the palette is fine, but just don't try to convince yourself, girl. <laughs> Woo. Okay, 
So yeah, they're really pretty. I do like the shimmers. I don't like the glittery shades. They're very textured. And when I focused on this palette for like a week or two, I just fought so much with some of these shades getting like all over my face. I wasn't a fan. And the only deep shade in here is this shade Vortex. So it's like the only one, it's like a deep, like a purple plum sort of shade. And it just, I wish there were deeper shades in here. I don't know. I just, it's, it's just not my favorite. I keep holding on to it though. Like, like I need to let it go. But I don't know, I don't know if I will. I don't know. I just, I need to let it go. Now, favorite collab. This one is more of like a sentimental choice. And that is the Odin's Eye and the Fancy Face Hummingbird palette. Here is the palette here. And I picked this one because Tina, the Fancy Face, I just feel like she really deserved this collaboration. Like, she has been on YouTube forever she's she does such like detailed explanations and uh wear tests and comparisons and just i love it like she works so hard she's also a caribbean woman which you know gotta support my people and i just feel like this was just she so deserved this and so this is my favorite collab just because of who it is so yeah Favorite collab. I'm happy for her. My 2021 favorite. That would have to be my Natasha Denona Retro Palette. Honestly, because I was sort of trying to think of this off the cuff, I couldn't remember anything else that was uh, released in 2021. So... I like this despite it being very different from the mini retro. I think I have that one somewhere that I can't see right now. Oh, here it is. So here is the mini retro and this has those nice greens in there which the larger retro, the midsize just doesn't. It's very much like the deeper cousin to like the love palette. Love is like very much pink and purple and this is kind of like mauvey and just deeper tones, but I really like it. I know, like maybe they should have put more greens in here, like the mini, but I still just really like it. What I enjoy about this is that I find I can just do some quick, pretty looks with it. And also, I don't mind the cream to powder formula. I know some people hate it, but yeah, this was just, I feel like it's an easy palette to use. I also find that it is complimentary on a variety of skin tones. Like Natasha Denona was doing something with herself last year. Except for some of the minis that she came out with that were just repeats of other palettes and whatever. So. Now, the palette that I did not expect to love is another Natasha Denona, and it is the Biba palette. Now, I didn't purchase this, you know, when it first came out. This was a later purchase for me, and I really wanted to see what, what, like, what, what? <laughs> But what? I really wanted to see what all the hype was about because I would always hear so many people like, oh my God, I love the Biba, the Biba, the Biba. And I'm like, what, what, what is it? What is it about this palette? And initially I thought it was really boring. I kind of still think it's pretty boring. This is the palette that I go to for when I want to like have an easy, quick, pretty like professional look. So whenever I'm doing a presentation, this is most often the palette that I'm wearing. I do like all of the looks that I've done with this palette. Um, I think it's just more muted and just a little softer than I tend to go, but I find it to be like super reliable. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. I didn't think I would go to it and pull it out as much as I noticed I am. And I actually realized that I can do some pretty, or we all can, do some pretty looks with this palette and even some ones that don't necessarily lean as much towards those neutral browns. Like you can do a lot of mixing and matching and everything. And yeah, I like it. Palette that sparks joy. 
that has to be my Divine Rose 2 by my homegirl, the Dame, Pat McGrath. The incomparable mother. This palette makes me so happy. This was like the first Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette that I purchased. I mean, actually I purchased two at the same time, but I was so excited to get my hands on this. I got Divine Rose 2 before I even looked at Divine Rose 1, which is so interesting. And this was a birthday gift to myself. It wasn't last year, it must have been like the year before. I don't know, time is but a construct right now. And I just love the colors and it just, I just remember that birthday as like, it was a good birthday. I didn't do anything special, but my partner bought me like all these pink roses and oh my God, I love pink, I love roses. It's just, it was chow. And then I had a custom made red velvet cake. Ooh, girl, when I tell you I was eating on that cake for so long and I was not sharing with anyone. It was custom made and the baker, like they delivered it to my house with some cookies. That might have been one of the best parts of the birthday if we're being honest. The newest palette to my collection is another Natasha Denona. Like, what am I, her, like, biggest fan? And that is the Mini Biba. This is, I think, the last palette I bought, or at least the last palette I bought that I currently have in my possession. Because the other one hasn't been delivered yet. But this is the most recent palette that I bought from Natasha Denona. Now, this was sort of teased. I've talked about it before. I think I have a dedicated video to it. And the difference between this palette and the larger Biba, as well as maybe the mini nude, is that these shades have more of a nude rosy undertone so if you're looking for that to have that kind of rosy undertone to your like browns and nudes then the mini biba is like a good choice and unlike some of her other minis that have come out recently all of these shades are new allegedly i believe they are but the mini metropolis has three old shades or repeat shades. The Mini Crush, initially I thought it was just like three or four of the shades, but no, all five of those shades are repeats. But supposedly these are all new and yeah. And then the first palette that you used or I used in 2022, actually, the first like eyeshadow I used was not a palette. It was um, like some of my Cleona singles, but that's not a palette. So I'm just gonna pretend and just skip that and let you know that it was the Jackie Ina and ABH palette, which was the first one that I used of 2022. Now this palette, I get a lot of use out of it. I have pan in six of the shades and I am gunning for all of them. <laughs> I used to have all of ABH uh, eyeshadow palettes. What's happening? I used to have all of the palettes. And similar to the Mercury Retrograde, like I feel like I was really trying to convince myself that those palettes look good on me until I got this one. And when I got this one, I realized, oh my God, like all of these shades work on me. Like they all show up, like look at this, you know? And so then that made me declutter all of my other ones. Yeah, I really enjoyed this palette. I really wish that it wasn't limited edition. Like it seems like it comes around ever so often again, but I feel like they could have done such a good job with keeping this as a permanent palette. I think it would have just said so much. 
it would have said something about them having, I believe, like their first collab with a black creator. The shades are just really catered toward a wider variety of skin tones rather than some of their other palettes, modern rena renaissance. Um, and so, yeah, I like the packaging. It's real pretty. I don't know. I'm just a huge fan of this and I am on a mission to pan everything in here. So that is why it was the first one I used this year and it's going to be one that continues in the rotation because I want to pan it all. Okay, I think that is all. I think those are all 11 questions or prompts. I'm really curious to hear what your answers are to some of these and if they're similar or super different from mine or if you're like, girl, that's a bad choice. Pick something else. <laughs> Let me know. I hope that some of this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.